Hello, welcome to Human Tech. My name is Guthrie. This is a podcast about the intersection of humans and technology. I am also joined by Susan. Hello, Susan. Hi, Guthrie. And I apologize to everyone out there. We have been traveling and doing business stuff. Um, you know, if this was brought to you by audible.com, maybe we would do this more than once every other week, but it's not. So I was listening to a podcast recently, um, early, this was like 2012 and they didn't have any sponsorship. Yeah. And so to coerce sponsors, <laughs> uh, they, they really wanted Nike sponsorship. So they kept saying, you know, Nike, sh- Nike shoes are the best. Uh, but you know, you know who makes, uh, no, no, sorry. It was the other way around. It, it, they, they, it was, it was just the opposite. It was, do you know who makes really, really, really horrible or the who, horrible shoes? Yeah. Is, is, you know, we won't say their name, but you know who makes really great shoes is Adidas. <laughs> Adi- Adidas is the, is the best company in the world. In the, you know, and with, they were doing this to attract Nike. Well, as the a thought sponsor? was, is that, is that as a bribe, Nike would pay them. Uh, Did it work? To, no, it's 2012. No one was listening to podcasts. I don't think Nike <laughs> sponsors podcasts anyway. <laughs> yeah, I. So but you were, you were suggesting that maybe we should talk meanly about somebody. Yeah, in pick um. No, or no, no, talk, no, talk nicely, really nicely about right? the See, then competitor. Then you don't have to like insult anyone, right? So like, so like, oh. who do you want as a sponsor? Oh, I don't know. Who do we want as a sponsor? We recently just bought Lenovo laptops. We did. Um. Today, like recently, as <laughs> right, as we've been rolling on 2012 uh, MacBook Pros <laughs> for a while now, and and they're upgraded. I I I ripped the hard drive out and put in new solid states in them, so they so they run just as fast as new machines. Well, but. Yeah, but we've given it all away because we've said all this. But you're saying what we could do was we could say how oh wonderful. you you know who makes the best computers is like is who? is Dell and HP and people not named Lenovo. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. You know, a lot of people listen to this podcast, but, like, not enough. If you look at, like, the top podcasts, you know? Yeah. They they get, you know, like, they get hundreds of millions of, of downloads every we're episode. We're not getting hundreds of millions of downloads every episode? Our traffic is really pretty good, but no, we're not in the hundreds, on, the hundreds of millions. On. I know. So, so um, to any of you listening, would you please coerce your hundreds of millions of friends that you have to listen to our Are podcast. you Donald Trump? Tweet about us. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, you know, I don't know. I This is not the topic for today, but um, I just, I can't help. I have this thing about fame that has plagued me fame, my entire fame, life. Fame. Isn't that, it's, it's a Bowie song, isn't it? I don't know. I want to be what do you mean well you don't known. Know? It's the it's it's the. It's I don't the Bowie know. Song. I, there's only a few Bowie songs that I know. Uh, I just want to be. I I have this. I constantly have this desire to be famous. It's it's ridiculous, and I think I'm I think I'm starting to let go of it because I don't think it's going to happen, and I probably wouldn't even like it. You know, I'm I'm always saying, oh. If only I could do blah blah blah, and then I'm um, able to do it, and then I go, oh, I'll, this was I don't like this. This is I'll a pain. send you the link to the to the Bowie song. It's called Fame. It's it's a really right. maybe I think it's maybe my favorite Bowie song. I wasn't a big '80s guy, and this is more of like a '70s groove, oh. which is why I, okay. I like it personally. All right. Did you did you ever All see right. the movie Labyrinth? You know. It's where David Bowie is like the king of the gremlins, and then he like I don't think kidnaps I saw that. this teenage no, girl. I I and don't is think kind I, of in like I, love with her, but then it turns out like it was like the girl like created him the whole time. It it's a weird movie, but uh, no, I don't think I've seen it. Oh, okay, I don't think I've seen it. Hmm. Well, S- that's yeah. So if someone would like to make us famous, give us hundreds of millions of views, and um. And get a sponsor. We would like that. But uh, in, in lieu of that, we still like doing the podcast. It's just that we, we, uh, sometimes it's hard to do when you're traveling because, you know, yeah, well, we don't have nice... our equipment. Yeah, we were, so um, we, we were in Michigan, uh, at, at, at the, at, at, at a, at a talk. Conference. We were at the internet 
This is still not what we're going to talk about today. No, we were at the Internet User Experience Conference, yep. and uh, where uh, I gave a talk and you gave a talk. And also, uh, this summer, we'll be traveling a lot. We're going to be going to Sweden. So we're giving three workshops in Sweden. So if you want to see us, sign up for our workshops. And a workshop in and not a workshop, and a talk in Paris. Yeah, we're doing a talk in Paris. All right, so um, shall we get to today's topic? We should. That was, that was some, that was some like, light banter, though. I That was kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> it was pleasant. That was very light. Light. Uh, and fuzzy. We we need. Uh, do do you do a radio voice? Hey, it's Susan on the nine. Oh yeah, I can do that. Okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, welcome to Human Tech. It's Susan and Guthrie. How's that's, that? That's pretty good. I mean, it's, you Thank sound you. like a guy. It's not, but that was pretty good. Yeah, that was, I, <laughs> I sound like a guy. Well, you you were clearly channel channel channeling a All right, male well, how DJ. would I do a? How would you do a? What well, is, isn't that? I always think of radio voice as being a guy. I, well, that's it's a product of your All time. Right, here, you want me to try hey, another one? When you were growing up, were there any female radio personalities? No, none. Yeah. None at all. Zero. Well, women couldn't go to there were barely graduate any female school either. TV personalities. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll try a woman one. You ready? I mean, I don't even know who to. Who yeah, I'm it's hard because that's definitely like the guys. Like... Hi, it's Susan, and I have with me today Guthrie. That's good. Wow. Really? I'm really impressed, actually. <laughs> that, was, that was like way better than I was expecting. That was like total. Okay. All right, let's get to work here. Uh huh. You know what I thought we would talk about today? What? Games, games, gamification. Uh, why gamification? Why people get everything wrong with gamification? Why everyone's given up on gamification? And then just games and what makes a game interesting? And then that will, of course, lead us into discussions of motivation, like rewards and mastery and things like that. So there is a person who I will not name who yeah. loves to make every argument a semantic problem. Do I know this person? It's possible you do. Just It's possible. All right, keep going. And the problem with gamification is actually yeah. a semantics problem. A definitional problem? A definitional problem. because I don't think that's the only problem with it. Well, I believe people people say gamification, and then yeah. they don't actually mean... They, what, they, what, they're, what, they're, what they say is gamification is not games at all. That's I agree with that. I and agree therefore, with that. So, it is a semantics problem. Well, maybe. Because they're using the term... It's like, it's like saying that, oh, like... Uh, like like you know fishing doesn't work to catch fish but by fishing you mean like holding a rod and not actually putting like bait and lure bait into a, right I, it's like, I, right you're like you're not yeah. well, you're not actually fishing you're just calling it fishing. I agree I agree but the problem the reason it's not just definitional is because because they think they know what they're talking about that doesn't change that <laughs> Okay. All right, so, so, let's back well, up. Okay. First, we should talk about what we mean then, or what we think anybody means by gamification, because I'm sh there's there's probably some people listening that can can I give you my definition what of term. what a game is? Uh, yeah, but you, okay. You and like then, this. are you going to give me your definition of what gamification would be? Yes. All right, go right ahead. What is a game and what is gamification? A game. Hey, Guthrie, what is a game and what is gamification? You kind of sound like Bowie now. Uh, <laughs> I'm David Bowie in Happily. Go ahead. Answer questions. So in my head, okay, yeah, a game is an activity yeah. purposely designed to yeah. raise your mental loads for some sort of f f amusement. That's a very weird definition. I don't know how. I, it's a brain I'm Speaking definition. of semantics, well, say it again, because I, I, I had a hard time following it. It's, it, so, so basically, it's a thing that's designed yeah. to raise your cognitive loads, your well, mental yeah, loads. We're gonna have to talk about right. that. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. 
for some type of uh, amusement. Okay, I don't agree with that, but okay. I thought that All was right. really good. Well, there's some problems with it. Well, maybe problems with the word. I, 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 th- I thought the concept was good. Maybe I didn't elaborate it correctly, but I thought. Well, all right. And and so let's hold on to that. Yeah. And then tell, then, yeah. then, so what, that's what a game is? Well, you come up with a better definition of So game what's then. gamification then? I am going to come up with a oh, better well, definition. Oh, well, gamification is simply applying, applying games and why games are cool to uh, choice architecture to get people to do certain things in a and but but using the mechanisms that makes that make game that makes games enjoyable using those same mechanisms to uh, influence choice architecture. Boom! Wow. Behavioral we, economics. Talk. We don't agree on this at all. No. What? Wait, wait. Is it? Is it? It's chess a game? Chess is a game. Yeah. Is golf a game? Yes. Usually, I guess they say, usually the problem is between game and sport, but. Oh, that's, that's an interesting, that's an interesting question. I've had this argument um, with a lot of people, like, what's a sport I, and what's a game? Yeah. What? Oh, God. Do I want to go off on that tangent? See, that's or the do thing. I wanna... No, no, you can. Uh, th- that's why. That's why I said it's a semantic. Like, a lot of this is just like semantic. It thing. is. It is. A lot of it is semantic. But let's go back to your definition and let's talk about why I want to change it a little bit. Because you said uh, cognitive load. You talked about mental load. But you know, mental load would just possibly be one type of load that you would increase. So yes, the idea is with a game that you have an activity that someone does. I meant I, mental load. I did. I didn't mean strictly cognitive. Yeah, I, I just. Mean you meant c- mental, which is the same as cognitive, and or visual and or motor. Well, that happens in no. That's why that that happens. In, does that not happen in the brain? Mm, you were t- talking. You were referring to all of those as cognitive. No, that's why originally I said mental twice, yeah. and then I, I said cognitive, and then I realized I, I messed up, and then I went back to mental. Well, processes. From, okay. So from the from the traditional human factors point of view, they human factors people traditionally talk about three types of loads. One is cognitive, which they use mental as a as a synonym. Meaning thinking and memory, I told you and then there's visual load, which yes is also happening. All of these are happening in the brain, oh. but visual load, which is um, you know how much you have to look at and see and process visually, and then motor load, meaning how much you have to move your hands or your arms. What would you call all of those loads? Is there a word that encompasses all three of those? I would just blank call them loads. 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 I don't. There wouldn't be an adjective. Well, you human, could have a physical load, which loads. would apply to muscles. A human factors. Yeah. A human, human yeah. factors load. That's. I think that's yeah. a little technical, but it's not. I, uh, that's better. There has to be like a. There has to be like a. Human be, load. The idea is just that you're you're placing demands on the human. I don't think. But, there this, is but a term. see, but yeah, no. But the problem is that human load also. In, when you talk about like human loads, you, there's like muscles, right? That's you're thinking like right, like I'm carrying yes. a heavy thing, and it's not. It's not. Yes. A, it's not physical. Well, but but the load idea is physical. No, it manifests physically, but all but the but the load itself. The the the, the only reason why games work is because the load happens in the brain. All right, so it's well, not like a muscle to, spasm, which is we're gonna outside. have to well, we're gonna have to create our own. Let's do it right then. here. Brain load. Okay, that's fine. I right. think that's that's good with me. Which could combine either uh, cognitive and or visual and or motor. Okay. So I right? didn't. Yeah, I didn't want to say brain load because it sounded not very technical, but it it is yeah, probably the best is, term. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the idea is... That's so why I said mental so, loads, which I, I thought know, was close. I know, I know, but mental usually refers to just thinking and memory. That's mm. You're going to get in trouble with human factors people if you oh, just no. mental load. You would never want to get in trouble with human factors people because they're very severe, <laughs> and there are severe punishments. Um, all right, so the idea, yes, is that, that, that you, you purposely raise 
one or more of these brain loads. Let's give an example. Okay, let's give an example. Um, Jim, yeah, I have a wait game. A wait a minute, wait a minute. So you purposely raise one or more of the brain loads in order to create an engaging, interesting experience. Pick, okay, so pick one of the loads and we'll walk through this. Okay. You give so the load, I'll give the example. All right, I'm, I'm going to pick visual load. Okay, so that would be uh, nothing happens just visually because otherwise it would be a pretty... I agree, but it, mainly we're increasing the visual load. Yeah. Um, Do you have a game? That that's just visual? decreases the visual load? I guess, uh, like, maybe, um, sure, sure. Like a like a point and click shooter, right? So like yeah. a Doom uh, or um, yeah, you're right. And you're, as you're, gonna... you're you know maybe maybe even like an Overwatch or uh, so, a Call of Duty. So what you're gonna find out is that Twitch typically gaming. Twitch. What you're gonna find out is that typically, when you create a game and you're increasing a brain some of the brain loads, you are increasing more than one. Usually it's like. Visual plus motor, right, 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 or right, visual right. plus cognitive, or cognitive plus. Well, because I was, I wish you wouldn't three. have started with that. Because if you would have started, for example, oh. with just um, motor. All right. So what if it was just motor? Right. Think of the game where it says, um, "Press this button," and yeah. you just—it's the game where you just press the button as many times yeah. as possible. And pe people who are my age will remember this on the internet. Yeah. Where like it was just like a. Like it was just you just clicked as fast as you could. Right, right. That no. is a purely, purely motor. motor stiff. I, I mean, and it and it gets boring very fast. But you know, that's that's that, right? So you combine that with a little bit of meant of of, of cognitive load, and, yes. and a little bit of visual, and you get, for example, maybe like a Candy Crush. Yes. Where it's you're you're moving things around, or um, Fruit Ninja, right? Where you're just you're slashing, and there's some thought to it, but you're mostly yeah. just. It's mostly yeah. muscle and movement getting to the right place at the right time. Uh, and so, then you move up uh, to, you know, you have more cognitive and you get like uh, RTS games, uh, MOBAs, uh, Overwatches and Starcraft and thinking. And um, and then you move into the realm of thinking alone. So Fez and puzzle games and Portal. Um, yeah. So the idea is that a cool. game uses one or more of these brain loads um and and by doing so it's interesting and engaging and but it doesn't just you know games don't just use brain loads so there's other things going on oh. so we should talk about some of the other things but the idea is that you use the brain loads and you use these other things and the uh, gamification is taking, uh, and we'll get to the other things in a minute. Gamification is taking this idea of what makes games engaging and interesting and applying those techniques and those principles to things that are not inherently engaging and interesting, such as, do you have an example? Do you know of, of of efforts to do gamification? Yes, I do. I well, I'm I'm trying to think of good efforts to do to do. Gamification <laughs> well, and... go ahead. Yeah, I know, and I and I can explain to you why why there aren't very many. But do do you have any idea of uh, any uh, even bad examples? Um, there are. Yeah, no, there are definitely. I definitely have. I've taken some uh, online training things where you get uh, you progress as you move up and badges. Right. As you, so there's as some you online stuff. training. Um, there's a lot of the, um, you know, uh, apps where you're learning a foreign language. Ironically enough, there's gamification. The best, the, uh, and maybe it's not ironically, but the best gamification systems that I have mm -hmm. seen occur mm -hmm. in games not while the game is going on but like so think of like um so uh, if, if we're sticking with blizzard all right so mm -hmm. um if you're playing heroes of the storm they just came out with the 2.0 patch and in in that right as you, you they've always had this but they have a better system now but as you play games as you move as as you do various tasks yeah. You move up levels, you unlock yeah. achievements, you unlock new profile pictures, and 
and you do so by playing the game, right? But but the, right. but the, but that has that but that's but that could have just been about healthcare or about anything else. But they actually have a really wonderful gamification system. But of course, they also are good at making games, so it makes yeah. sense that 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 would work. Yeah, and and you know a lot of um, there's a lot of software and a lot of apps that have that are not inherently game like that have tried to apply gamification to make them more interesting, to get people to use them more. Sometimes these are like, um, you know, internal to a company. Like it's not something that, Uh, like the employees use it. A call center, you know, how many calls can you get through and you get reward and you get points or, um, uh, you know, internal training inside the company, right? You know, take a certain. You have to take a certain amount of courses, and if and if you take, uh, you know, you attend or take enough of the training. Um, I've seen it. They've tried to apply it. I've seen gamification tried to be applied to just about everything. Well, you banking, you can apply it to everything. They just you can't do so poorly. It's just they do it poorly. So. Um, so you want to talk, so should we talk about why they do it poorly and why they get it wrong and what else there is about games besides the increasing of the loads? Sure. I'll, By let, the way, I'll let you. Uh, st- You're going to let me yeah, and this wax? Is, we're, 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 we're rolling into, into my Susan expertise. territory very quickly here. Although I want to mention, before we roll into Susan territory, I want to mention about the idea these we were talking about these loads you know these these brain loads so from a human factors point of view you know it initially when these were first talked about which i think was in the 1980s i'm actually not sure about that i mean that's when that's what when i know of them being talked about but it's possible they were talked about before that but um the goal in the uh, of of the whole brain load theory initially was that you wanted to lower all the loads. But in, and in a world in which you were trying to make things as easy to use as possible. Yes. Having to have a very complex, I mean, think of back in the eighties before, you know, UX was really a field and before we had, you know, before material design was just a thing and, you know, there, there were there are now aesthetic standards that if you build a website, you must follow. You know, back in the day, there were, like, no one knew what a website was supposed to look like. Well, if you're talking about the 80s, there weren't any websites. Well, okay, yeah, websites, software. software, I mean, whatever whatever the, the, the case may be. Yeah. And so yeah. why not just have every single option on the screen all at the same time? Right. So, so yeah, in the, in the 80s, the whole idea of usability became, it, for software, became strong, started. That's when it started, in the mid-80s. And the idea was, from a human factors point of view, that you wanted to lower all the loads. You wanted it to be as easy to use as possible. You wanted people to think as little as possible, to have to search visually as little as possible, to have the, you know, to remove all the, and I guess it's hard to understand if you weren't around then that, that the, co- the the brain loads, cognitive, visual, motor, were horrible to start with. I mean, there were, uh, you know, you could, there there weren't any drop downs. There, there was hardly anything on the screen. You had to memorize all these codes and abbreviations. And so there was a lot of mental load. Um, visually, uh, you know, you didn't have graphical user interfaces and so things were very ugly and it was hard to find anything. So there's a lot of visual load and then even motor load, like, um, you had to, uh, do weird key combinations with both hands and, and, uh, on and on. So, uh, the idea was lower the loads as much as possible. And then if you can't lower them all, at the same time, which sometimes you can't, you know, you'd trade off and you'd, you'd, um, you know, we talk about the fact that the motor load is the least expensive. It's, it's much harder to get people to remember something than it is to get them to just, you know, click a button. So you would, um, uh, trade off. You'd, you'd, uh, decrease the, the mental load, uh, even if it meant a few more clicks. And so that, that was the kind of conversations we had 
in the 80s and in the 90s. Um, but, you know, more recently, we talk about, um, uh, which some people don't like, we talk about purposely raising loads in order to make things more engaging. And it just doesn't have to be just with games or just with gamification. You know, you might you might have more things going on on a screen visually just to grab or hold attention. Um, so, uh, and certainly in games, you do want to raise one or more loads because if it, if you if all the loads were lowered, if you didn't have anything you had to think about or remember, if you didn't have anything you had to look at, and if you didn't have any buttons you had to push, it would be a really boring game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe it's just called like a blank screen. <laughs> just so. Womp womp. Yeah, so the idea, though, the problem is, the problem is that that's not all a game is. And that's, and, and when, when people do gamification, I don't even think they even use the load idea. Like they typically, you know, what's a typical thing, Guthrie, when someone says, oh, we're going to do gamification. Badges. Badges. They do rewards. They give yeah. rewards. For for now, it's interesting because there there's like this some um, intuitive understanding. Well, games have badges and levels. Games have badges and levels and levels is interesting because levels is is really what's underneath levels is is what you know you know I call the desire for mastery and and let so levels themselves can be really important in gamification and making things engaging but not just not just for the sake of levels <laughs> but levels that are really correspond to um progress and uh feedback and mastery so i really want to talk about this thing called desire for mastery and i want to talk about the relationship the interesting relationship between the desire for mastery and the use of rewards, um, because that these are the these are the places where people go wrong in gamification, and this is why gamification, which was like a big deal, maybe what five, ten years ago, has like just you know nobody wants to even try it anymore because it doesn't work. But the reason they it doesn't work is because they did it wrong. So um, I want to talk about this. Because uh, what makes, I think, what makes games really interesting and really challenging and people and, and engaging is, besides the loads we talked about, is a couple things. One is the idea of autonomy. So I'm going to ask you some questions. All right? Okay. Let's go away. So first of all, do you know what autonomy means? Autonomy. Um, yeah. Lord of the Flies, right? I don't know. What is that? Oh, well. Wait, what is Lord of the Flies? Are you serious? Well, I know what Lord of the Flies is, but what does it have to do with autonomy? Uh, aut okay, so autonomy is I can do what I want. Yeah, I am the king control. of the castle. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, there's a certain amount of autonomy that people need in order for what they're doing to be interesting and engaging. Do you, I mean, that's what I believe. Do you believe that's true? So if you had no, if you're playing a game, okay, and you have no control over anything. I, what, I feel, yes, the pick your path is, is very strong because it, in the game sense, it gives your... Uh, you, you, you. There are consequences to your choices, which makes yes. your decisions more important. Yeah. So if you had no control and there were no consequences and your decisions didn't matter, you know, it gets to the point where okay, this is not very interesting because I don't, I can't. There's nothing I can do. It doesn't matter what I do. Right. Somebody else is pulling all the strings. So autonomy, right? The ability to have some control. You don't have to have entire control. But the ability to have some control or to think you have control over what's going on is is uh, is important in order for the game to be interesting. So you've been to um, you've been to Las Vegas. Las Vegas. I was in Las Vegas right? last year. 
Shout out to Colby. And you've paid and you've played uh, uh, slot machines. I lost some money at slot machines. Yes. So an interesting thing about slot machines, I think, is that um, now some people seem perfectly able to just sit there and do it over and over. Can I though... can I tell you a quick slot machine story? Sure. So I am poor. I mean, I'm not like real poor, but on this on the spectrum of of inequality in the United States, I, I I'm on the poor <laughs> spectrum. Okay. But um, so I was I was staying uh, at the Wynn Hotel, which is maybe yes. the nicest hotel in Las Vegas. And uh-huh. so, I, if you're poor, do you want to s- explain why you, how you're staying there? Well, I did, just the way Vegas works, the rooms are cheap. Yeah. But but generally it's it's a it's a it's fancier. So I whatever. Yeah. So I'm down I'm down in the gambling area. And yeah. um, I'm just sitting there. I'm waiting for for you know if my friends to show up. I I, I we were meeting up in the lobby in in the kind of yeah. main casino gambling area, and I'm so I'm just sitting at a at a slot machine. I'm not really using it because you know it's just I'm just sitting there, and I look over and uh, oh you know across you know is is sitting in front of me is a, an older woman, and you know I, she maybe she's waiting for someone to I don't know. And she's on the, uh, she's on the the slots now. Now you can choose, you know, how much your slots are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think she's on the five dollar slot. Wow. And so she's just sitting there. Yeah. And every eight seconds, she's pressing yeah. the roll button. <laughs> it's five dollars every eight seconds. Wow. And over the course of like a minute or two, you know, she two hundred dollars just gone. I mean, wow. I, I like didn't face her at all. I mean, I'm sure she had an enormous gambling budget, but like, she and and she was sitting there with a glass of red wine, no one else around yeah. her, like clearly bored out of her mind. Yeah. And I was this close to just walking over and being like, "Hey, just pay me two hundred dollars, and I will." <laughs> entertain you i, I will we'll, do a we'll little talk. song and dance yeah yeah wh- whatever you want right we can have for, a conversation for like 10 minutes I'll right i'll save you, you money. Uh, 64 questions yeah yeah we did uh, i spy whatever it is like i i will keep you entertained <laughs> you know for for 10 minutes for two but yeah no just five bucks every i know every couple seconds. i know well and i'm sure some people listening really like you know, gambling. I you I know you and I we were in Las Vegas together for work oh, and we went. It's fun. No, I like it. I mean the 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 real fun is in the is in the table games, but of course that's where you can really lose a lot of money. Yes. Very quickly. But that but it's more engaging because for most of those you one re, one reason it would be more engaging and interesting would be because you feel that you have some control, even though you might not, you feel like you have some, you know, you have to make a decision, yeah. you know, hit me, don't hit me, or roll the dice or don't roll the dice. You know, you, you feel like you have some control. Also, and in- the odds are better, A. And it's tough personally for me. Like, I, I feel like the slots would be really, really fun if you never played video games because it's such a fun cognitive visual it's like such a vi- yes, fun visual it is load very visual and the yeah. buttons and the dials and it's the screens yeah, right, and it's really fun right i play video games all the time right so like and they're free and like i have all kinds of like you know explosions and, and artifacts yeah, and yeah. you know mythology and i mean you know so yeah that's true okay sorry that all was right, that was so uh, that was quite the the that's it the so detour. so one thing that makes uh a game or any experience more interesting is if you feel you have some control. All right, that's one. Let's go on to the next one. You okay, ready? Yes. The next one is um, the next one is a, a amount of challenge. Okay. So so if if the thing that you're doing is super 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 easy, it won't be very engaging or interesting. Got to get those loads up. If it's super, super hard, it also won't be really engaging and interesting because you'll you'll just say, forget this, I can't get it. Unless, so you, though, um, unless, yeah, unless the setup is that it's really, really hard. But like, and that's okay. What do you mean the setup? There's a game called Dark Souls. Yeah. 
And the whole point of Dark Souls, I think they're up to like three, Dark Souls 3 now. Very popular game. And yeah. the, the whole thing about it is that it's insanely hard. Like, every time you meet a, you like meet like a boss that you need to fight. Yeah. Uh, you're probably going to lose like 40 times. Like, it's just, yeah. you'd like, it's just so hard. The thing is, is that for like each boss, it's almost like a puzzle. Where you have to you you have to like roll and then and spin and turn hit the back jump over the top right roll spin and like if you can figure out the little trick for each boss, then yeah. you can get by it. But it's very difficult, very yeah. difficult. But also that's why it's like so incredibly rewarding. Yeah, and for and you know so the it's interesting about the level of challenge yeah. because it varies for each person. Yeah. But and, and, and expectations moment. too. If you walked into that game, just yeah. think it was a normal game, and not right. being like this game is like so hard, like right. oh my god, like you would be right. like this then, is stupid, and you'd stop playing. Right. But if you if someone has said to you this game is really hard, right? Yeah. So now you go in expecting it. You you expect a certain level of challenge. Right. Right. So so it's that so it, in order for something to be engaging. It has to kind of hit a sweet spot of challenge for you based on your ability and skill and your expectation. Right. And if it's too easy based on those things, it won't be that engaging. If it's too hard, it won't Can be that Can I engaging. ask a question? Yes. Does that still hold true when there's other people involved? Because, for example, if I was playing a video game against a computer, right? Let's yeah. just play. I'm playing. Let's just say I'm playing Civ Five. Okay, Civilization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm playing against a computer and I'm on easy, right? Yeah. It's kind of a waste. Of, like I roll through and I just like I'm whooping everything. And maybe it's fun as like a piece of art to like create a civilization, but yeah. there's really no challenge and it's it's just like it's just super easy. Yeah. However, if I was to play one of my favorite online games that I play with other people. Yeah. And I rolled in with like a super good team and we played against a bunch of really low ranked players and we were just like rolling through, like destroying all of them. That would be really, really fun. Or like, yes. you think of like the basketball court, right? Like, yeah. right. Like you're really good at basketball. You roll to the basketball court where there's a bunch of like bad people and you're just like roasting them and you just, just going crazy. Yeah, so that's I mean, that's because you've added an an additional, uh, possibly two elements. One is social, and one is competition. Right, and 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 the and those do then that will change. So we you know we can talk about social and competition too. Okay, and how that that fits in. Right. So, um, so hold on to that idea. Okay, I'm I'll, All right. I'll hold on. So we talked about level of challenge. Mm -hmm. Next thing I want to talk about is feedback. So this is kind of a subtle thing that, well, it's not that subtle, but it's, it's you know, when you, again, go back to someone says, hey, let's, when we're doing our software wait, app, wait, we're going to. Can you do this in a voice? Hey, when we're doing our software app, let's make sure we build in gamification. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You like my voices? That, I have, good. I have many voices, <laughs> many, many voices with accents. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I. I, it's really one of those things that I do. See. Okay, so yeah, you feedback. Feedback is really important, and so feedback means that I am getting information fairly regularly, and how regularly depends on you know the situation and what the game is. But I'm getting information on how I'm doing. On whether I'm getting better, whether I'm winning, whether I'm doing better than somebody else, whether I'm beating the computer, whether my skills are increasing. I mean, there's lots of ways that you can give feedback and what you're giving feedback on. But the idea is you got to give people feedback. So if you were playing a game, right, and you had no idea how you were doing, either, you know, you had no idea if you were doing better than the other person or no idea that if you were winning against a computer or no idea if you scored higher this time than last time. I mean, you, 
it would, again, it would not be engaging. People need feedback. They just need feedback. It's a very human thing to want to know, how am I doing? Am I on target? Am I doing better than expected? Am I doing better than other people? They got to have feedback. So that's a really important part of it is just letting people know. And, and the thing that people get wrong about feedback is they think when they give feedback, they have to say how great you're doing. You know? You're doing, hey, by the way, this podcast, yeah. you're doing yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. So that's different. So that's not feedback. That's praise. And that's actually a bad idea. And I'm going to explain that in, in a few minutes. So you have to hang on. After the break, we'll talk about why praise is so bad. Uh, there is no break. But um, yeah, hold on to that idea. But you need feedback. So that, so we talked about autonomy. We talked about the right amount of challenge. And we talked about the fact that people need feedback. So those are three things that are really important if you're going to make the experience interesting and engaging. And um, all right, now I want to, the next thing I want to talk about is what you were talking about, which is social and competition. And I want to talk about flow and I want to talk about rewards. Okay. Better top two. Which one do you want me? No, no, no. Which one? Just go. Just go. All right. So you mentioned about, you know, playing with other people versus playing with yourself. So, so first, or playing against the computer or whatever. So first thing is the social aspect of it. So um, that can be, depending on the game, a really, really important part of it. Uh, it might be just as, you know, kind of distracting part or an ancillary part, or it might be really critical and it kind of depends on the game. Um, but, you know, we've talked about before, we talk about in our workshops and our keynotes about how critical social interaction is so people like doing stuff with other people even if it's not competitive they just like working with other people they really like working on a team people work harder when they're on a team than they will if they're working alone it's just a a way we're wired is to be interested in interacting with other people so games don't have to have that social element but um if they do that that could very well be an added advantage, right? And then there's competition, which is also kind of, you'd think that'd be related to social because, you know, you got other people. But competition is different because that has to do with not just doing things with other people, but doing things better than other people. And, you know, there's competition amongst individuals or you can have team competition. And competition is interesting. Um, you know, the, it's very few of the things we talk about have uh, gender differences. This is one of them. So the research shows that uh, men um, will perform better at what they're doing if there's competition with other men or with a mixed group of men and women. Uh, women, however, it, competition is not particularly motivating. And um, they... If there's competition involved, it doesn't, I mean, it won't hinder their performance, but it may not improve their performance if it's just an individual against individual. Yeah. Uh, and that's true f- if they're competing with women or if they're competing with men, doesn't matter. It just doesn't seem to do a lot to their performance. Um, also, uh, for mainly for guys, because competition is mainly motivating for guys, uh, if there are 10 or less competitors, their performance is better than if there are more than 10. Okay. There's, there's this interesting research study where they had people take the SAT with, in rooms with different numbers of people. And they also had them, uh, uh, you know, the SAT exam, right? The college yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. exam. Yeah, 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 sure. And they also did it when, when for those they, overseas, it's a it's a test. A pri- it's a private test. You get a score, and that determines uh, how much colleges want to accept you. Yeah, it's Otherwise, a it's a test of reasoning and general knowledge and that kind of thing that you take before you go to college. So um, even when even when uh, they weren't 
they didn't see that there were other people in the room, just being told, for instance, how many people were taking the test right at that moment. You know, there are, you know, five people that are taking the test in your group versus there are 100 people. Or if they could, you could see because the number of people. So the, when there were less people, when there were 10 or less people, people scored higher hmm. than when they were 60 or whatever, you know, more than 10. So, um, so competition, you know, can be motivating and can make it more interesting and engaging in a game. You know, the whole idea of leaderboards and all of that. If, if it's guys, if it's girls, women, eh, maybe not so much. So that's social and that's competition. And then I had two more topics, flow. Do you know what flow, the flow state is? I know what it is. I think it's very cool actually yeah i think we've all experienced flow at some point and so uh it's an interesting state of mind and i don't know that i've seen somebody surely must have been have done some brain measurements eeg or fmri when people are in the flow state i actually haven't checked that research out i should check that out but there's this state of mind you get in uh, called the flow state, and we've all had the experience of it. You know, when you're so engaged in something that you you uh, you know everything else falls away. You don't even realize that there's other people around. You don't realize that time is passing. You are so fully engaged, you kind of get lost in the moment, and it's a very pleasurable experience. And it's a very, uh, it's just an interesting, it feels differently than when you're not engaged in a flow state. Hmm. So uh, if you can, uh, and you know, what causes a flow state? Well, it's all these other things we've been talking about, right? Where it's engaging and it's the right level of challenge and you feel you have some autonomy. And those things all increase the likelihood that someone will go into a flow state. And when someone's in a flow state, it's very engaging. We enjoy flow states. Mm. That's like a, a nice experience to be in. Um, and all, all kind of, you can get into a flow state, you know, when you're working, when you're playing music, when you're playing a game. There's all kinds of things that will could, could uh, help you get into a flow state. All right, and then the last topic, really important, and real. This is the big mistake. To me, this is the big mistake people make when they talk about gamification. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Drum roll. Do you know what it is? No. There is a, a, a strong amount of research to show that when you give someone a reward, it turns off the desire for mastery. So all these other things we've been talking about, you know, like... Um, the right amount of challenge and autonomy and flow and all of that, those are all about this thing I call the desire for mastery. So we like learning and growing and getting new skills and seeing how far we can go and and mastering things. It's just, it's just people like that. Um, and uh, I mean, there's probably an evolutionary reason for that, right? People who could gain new skills uh, lived longer and passed on their genes and so on. So it's a good motivating thing for humans to like to master things and learn new things. But if the research shows that if you give people a reward for doing something, it just stops the desire for mastery. It's like instead of doing it because they're learning new things and seeing how good they can do, they just do it to get whatever the reward is, the food, the praise, mm -hmm. the badge, and they're not doing it because of any intrinsic desire for mastery. And so therefore, as soon as you take the reward away, they'll just stop doing it. Yeah. So uh, when you do things like badges, you're probably ruining the whole game. Um, you know, if you're lucky, the game is so engaging and so interesting that people just kind of ignore the badges. Now, the badges could, if the badges are not a re reward, but are a sign of the level of progress you have made, that's, that's, that works. Yeah, so, so that's how, so for example, in Heroes of the Storm, 
the good system I, I mentioned earlier. Yeah. So the way it works is if you achieve a certain level that season, yeah. you unlock a badge that you show to all your friends, I am level silver or level gold or level platinum. Yeah. For example. Right? But but it's not so 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 it's it's a it's a it's a mark of your achievement. Yeah, so in that case it's not really a reward. Right. Really, as you said, it's a mark of achievement. It tells me that I've achieved a certain level, so it's it's giving me feedback. It gives you feedback. It um it uh, just lets you know how much progress you've made, which people like, and and then you know it also lets your competitors and friends know. So if you're a guy, especially, that would be good. Uh, it, c- it could have a social element to it, um, and then so so that's what it's acting as. It's actually not acting as a quote reward. But have you ever? you know either use software or play the game where there's just the, these badges just kind of yes like they don't they yes. don't really Useless denote badges. a level of ma- uh, of mastery they just are like they're pretty and now we're giving you a badge and it's like I don't, I, I don't know why you're giving me the badge or I you know I didn't really do much to get that badge you know it's it's kind of meaningless and so those are the ones that actually can make things worse not better make it less engaging not more engaging so yeah, so that's the mistakes that I see people do when they do gamification is they haven't thought through all this. I mean, this, everything we talked about this is fairly complicated, right, to get right. And a lot of times people just say, well, we'll just, you know, we'll give a badge and we'll play little ta-da when you um, <laughs> take a certain action. Right. And, and then it's like, it didn't work. Nobody wanted to use our lousy software. Oh, really. lousy. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to use. Nobody wants to use it. But we we give little noises, flashlights, and give badges at random amounts. And then we wonder why they still don't want to use our bad software. <laughs> That's why. So do you think gamification is dead? If people just no. stopped. No, 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 no. No? No, no, no. I think, I think people will figure out how powerful choice architecture is soon. And then, well, yeah, we, we haven't even talked about choice architecture. Well, that's the reason you do it, right? And I think, I think once people realize, oh, that this is, like, super powerful, you'll start to see more people implement it. I mean, the funny thing is, is that I think there have been some good impl- implementations in various game systems. If you think of like um, iOS games or Google has Android games, like they all have like gaming platforms that you're supposed to use, mm-hmm. and and just no one adopted them. So I think if you ever have a winner who implements the system well, then then I think everyone will just copy People that. People will yeah. copy it. Yeah, but 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 besides outside of the gaming realm, which again. People who make video games know how to make a compelling, you know, award, reward achievement system anyways. Pretty sparse out there. Yeah. Yeah, pretty sparse. They should hire us. Who should? I don't know. People who try to make good game systems. Or like so do you think that pe- systems. people who design games, do you think they are basing this on... Um, and maybe some of them can write in and let us know. Do you think they're basing their game design on particular uh, principles of psychology and behavior science, or are they just doing what they have found works, which actually is based on the principles, but they don't necessarily know what they are? I bet you it's a little both. Um, I bet you there are some sophisticated uh, developer shops out there who really who 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 know the research. I would yeah. that would not surprise me. I mean, the video game industry is much larger than the mo- movie industry these days. So, I mean, there's a lot of people hired and a lot of people trying to make really engaging stuff. Um, so I, I would be surprised if no one was ha- had this kind of stuff in mind. Um, if, you're, if your book wasn't floating around in someone's office. I think a lot of times, though, there are just simply, you know, tried and true game stuff that, that they follow. You know? Like, like, the, like the world of... Like, World of Warcraft, okay, years ago, figured out, oh, 
if we just have like a leveling up system and make it open world and give you a bunch of quests and like crap you got to do it'll be like the most addictive game that the world has ever created and people will just get super engrossed in it and then i mean <laughs> yeah once you have that beautiful beautiful model you just make yeah derivations of it and it's gonna be awesome it's hard to mess up all right so um you know because i apparently care so much about being famous but uh, no actually i'm really curious so if i would you know what i would love because you said you, you you're sure that some game developers companies have copies of some of my books floating around so i i would i have a i have a challenge guthrie Uh-oh. i would like to hear from them so if you are listening to this and you are a game developer and one of my books, either 100 Things Every Designer Needs to Know About People or 100 More Things Every Designer Needs to Know About People or How to Get People to Do Stuff. See, that was a really quick plug for some of my books. I had noticed. If any of those books are um, floating around, uh, your your place of business, whether you've read them or not, uh, email us and let us know because I just kind of want to know. And Guthrie, this is a perfect excuse to tell people how to email us. Info at the team w dot com. Yeah. And uh, you can um, also uh, find us on Twitter at the brain lady. Instagram is where at I the am. Team w. Instagram at the team W. Yeah. So uh, um, we will try and get in. Uh, you know, Guthrie, what we were supposed to do is we were supposed to record a bunch of podcasts that we would have kind of queued up and ready to go so that when we're traveling, people don't have to miss a week because I know they love our podcast so much they don't want to miss a week. But so far we haven't been really good at that. So maybe we can do that before we head off on our tour of well, Sweden. It just, makes it, it just makes our time together that much more valuable, right? <laughs> I guess. Scarcity principle. So yeah, any of you who are in the Sweden or close to Sweden, Sweden. You, you should come see us at one of our workshops. We're co-teaching them. It's going to be lots of fun. I'm very excited about going back to Sweden. I'm really excited about being able to go to um, two new cities in Sweden. Gothenburg and uh, Malmo. You want to say something in your Swedish accent? I've been trying to learn Swedish. I have no idea if this is any good or not. It's better than I can do. I'm it's sure it's really, really bad. bad. Yeah. Jag drinker vatten. I'm trying to learn Swedish. And, and, and I'm really enjoying it. And I love... I love learning new languages. Um, it's a tough one, but well, I it's it's probably not that tough. I just need to spend more time time on it. So anyway, do you have one more? Uh, if you don't, it's fine. Do I have one more phrase? Uh, not off the top of my okay. head. No, okay. I am sure I have many more. But, but I put you um, on the spot there. You did. I I came up with one. Do Do you know the word for for like hello? Yes, the word for hello in Swedish is, you ready? Mm-hmm. Hey. Oh, lame. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and I know the word for thank you. Dear. Just tack. Yes, I did know that one. So, yeah, I know. It's it's great. Uh, hey. <laughs> That's all you need to do to say hello. Yeah. So we're, we're, we lucked out on that. I, you know, when we first, I'm so, I'm so embarrassed to admit that when we first went to Sweden and everyone just said, hey, I thought they were just saying, hey. Oh, well, in fairness, everyone in Sweden, like, speaks English, so. They do, I know, but that's still no excuse for not trying to learn Swedish. There you go. So, uh, anyway, I'm trying. We'll see how much I can learn, guys, before the trip. All so, right. So, Guthrie, we are done for today. Adios, everyone. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.